What's up YouTube, it's Kenny again. So when I was researching all of the stuff about solar for van life and you know and for building a cargo trailer and RVs and all this stuff that I've been looking at over the last couple of years, it was it felt really difficult to comprehend. And you know, after doing all the research and finally understanding, I hit this point where I finally understood how it all ties together. Uh, it it dawned on me that it's really actually very simple. All right, you just it's just that none of these videos and information out there really tells you how it all ties together and why you need to know these uh, two or three concepts. And if you understand these just two or three four concepts and you understand how they tie together it's actually really easy to design a solar system now there's a little bit of basic math involved in it but it really is quite simple okay and so I wanted and I, I created this video on my other channel but it's such an important video in my opinion even though I didn't get very many views over there that I wanted to put this video here as well so I'm gonna to try to recreate it so running solar on a mobile vehicle okay you're you're kind of limited as to how much solar you can fit on top of the vehicle and you really kind of have to understand how these concepts work if you want to design it yourself and figure these things out yourself without making a bunch of mistakes and spending a bunch of extra money so here are the basic concepts that you need to understand and then I'll tell you how they link together okay number one is that watts wattage is not just a measurement of electricity watts is a measurement of time as well so if you have a microwave that uses a thousand watts that's how much power it uses in an hour if you have a, a coffee maker that uses 500 watts that's how much watts how many watts it uses in an hour so that's something that's important to understand okay because when we're trying to figure out how much solar we need uh, we really need to understand that that's a measurement of time also similarly uh, batteries like these deep cycle lithium batteries and deep cycle AGM batteries they're measured in amp hours okay and so that is a measurement of time as well so if you have a 12 volt which most of these batteries are 12 volts if you have a 12 volt battery that is a hundred amp hours then that battery has 1200 watt hours okay and that's the next concept that you need to understand is that amps times volts equals watts okay so if you have a battery that's 12 volts and a hundred amp hours that is 1200 watts or 1200 watt hours so if you have a device say a, a a coffee maker that uses 400 watts okay that means it uses 400 watts per hour and the battery is 1200 watt hours so that battery will run that coffee maker for three hours four times three is 1200 and the battery has 1200 amp hours okay so amps times volts equals watts okay that's one of these concepts that you are is pretty easy to understand but you don't really understand until later how these concepts fit together okay so what we have watts as a measurement of time and amps times volts equals watts and of course you can reverse that if you don't have the amps you can divide watts divided by volts to get the amps etc you know it's just basic math all right so uh, another thing that is really important to understand is the concept of series versus parallel so series and parallel are two different ways that you can wire things together okay you can take two batteries say you have two 12 volt batteries you can wire those two batteries in series or in parallel together all right and the if you wire things in series it affects the voltage the voltages add together if you wire things in parallel the amps add together so if you wire something in series the volts add together but the amps stay the same and if you wire something in parallel the amps 
add together, but the volts stay the same. So just an example, uh, we'll talk about why you would want to run a 12 or 24 volt battery system, but if you wanted to run a 12 volt battery system and you had two 12 volt batteries, you would wire those two batteries together in parallel. So then you would have, say you have 12 volt, 100 amp batteries, okay? If you wire those together in parallel, then you will have still have a 12 volt battery, but it will now be 200 amp hours. So instead of 1200 watts, you got 2400 watts, all right? Now, if you wired those same batteries together in parallel, I'm, I'm sorry, in series, if you wired those same two batteries together in series, then what you're creating is a 24 volt battery that is still only 100 amp hours. So the volts add together and the amps stay the same. All right, and this same concept is important with solar panels, all right? If you have two, if you have four 50 volt 10 amp solar panels and you wire all four of those together in series then those volts add up so you now have a 200 volt array but it is still only 10 amps and if you wire them together in parallel then you now have a 50 volt solar array but it is 40 amps okay so series and parallel is important for batteries and solar panels okay so Let's go through and understand why these concepts are important and how they fit together. This is the part, like really, that I never understood until like some blocks started falling into place in my mind, okay? So in order to build your own solar system and design that solar system, there are certain things that you have to figure out, okay? Number one, how much battery do you need? Like how much battery do you need, okay? and regardless of how you charge those batteries, everything that you do comes off of those batteries. And so the way you figure that out is you understand that watts are a measurement of time and you go through the things that you use and figure out how long you use them and how much power they use. And then you do some simple calculations and figure out about how much power you're gonna use in a day. And this is important, the watts equals time is important because like if you have a microwave and you think, man, that thing uses a thousand watts, you know, but you're only going to run that thing for like 10 minutes. So how do you do that, cal that calculation? Well, you would just take that wattage and divide it by 60, which is 60 minutes in an hour and get that number. And then you say, well, I'm going to use it for 10 minutes. So that number times 10, and that tells you how much power you're going to use in a day from that thousand watt microwave. You're really not using that much power from it you know, because you're not running it very long. Whereas something like an air conditioner, you know, 400, say a 400 watt air conditioner, you're gonna run that thing for several hours. So that's one calculation you have to figure out. How much battery are you gonna need in a day, okay? Now, when you think about charging that battery bank, you need enough solar to be able to charge that battery every day. Okay, now you got to think you're going to get about five hours of sun, five good hours of sun on a nice sunny day. And with a van, you're going to have your panels mounted flat. So if you have a thousand watt, watts of panels on the top, you're not going to get a thousand watts because you're not angled towards the sun. You know, so you got to think about 25% loss, you know, and, and do that calculation and figure out a way that you're able to charge those batteries every day. Uh, there's more to it than that. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. But, uh, so, okay, so when you think about whether you want to run a 12-volt, 24-volt, 48-volt battery system, okay, that's what you'll, you'll hear it referred to as a 24-volt system or 12-volt system. What that's really saying is that you've got your batteries wired a certain way. Okay, so you've either wired your batteries for a 12 volt system or you've wired your batteries for a 24 volt system. It's unlikely you'd even want to think about 48 volt in a van. All right. So the reason that you might want to play with that is because when you go to buy your solar charge controller, the charge controller is what converts solar power and into usable power that uh, charges your batteries. Okay. When you go to buy your solar charge controllers, it's going to have numbers. It's going to have specifications. It'll say like, it's a, just for instance, okay, it's a 
100 watt, 100 volts and 30 amps. So that means that the most volts you can put into that charge controller is 100 volts. And the most amps you can put into that charge controller is 30 amps, okay? So it will also say you can only put 1200 watts of solar panels it'll say pv input max pv input that means you can only put this many watts of solar panels into this charge controller no, no matter how you configure it okay but that is on a 12 volt battery if you're running it on a 24 volt system most charge controllers will do either so if you're running that same uh system on a 24 volt battery then instead of accepting 1200 watts of pv input you can put 2400 volts 2400 watts of solar panels up there so if you're trying to get a larger array with a smaller charge controller then you might want to think about going to 24 volts on your batteries now the one drawback is that like if you're trying to charge from the engine most of those things are 12 volts so you have to find one that's actually does 24 volt uh, that's the only major drawback okay and then and then one other thing is that like you if your inverter goes out or something you can go buy a 12 volt inverter no problem but 24 volt inverter is a little bit harder to find you're not just going to go find one of those at the truck stop or walmart or something you know uh, so you have to be prepared for that also so that's why you need to understand series in parallel as far as batteries are concerned okay because if you if you decide that you want to put more solar panels and you don't want to get a big expensive charge controller then you can get a little bit cheaper charge controller and just run it in 24 volts and it'll allow you to uh to put a bigger array on top all right now it's also important with solar panels because we're going to use the same example of this charge controller that accepts accepts a uh, hundred volts and 30 amps okay and we're going to use these same solar panels we talked about earlier also they are 50 volts and 10 amps each all right so you cannot wire all of those solar panels in series together because if you do the volts add together and it will be 200 volts at 50 volts each but it will still only be 10 amps and the charge controller only accepts 100 volts okay and similarly you cannot wire all those solar panels together in parallel because the amps add up and the volts stay the same while well, then you would only have a 50 volt array it would be 40 amps and the charge controller only accepts 30 amps so the reason you need to understand this concept is because what you can do is you can wire two strings together okay so you have two solar panels wired in series and that means that 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 those two panels are 100 volts and 20 amps okay 100 volts and 10 amps okay the volts add together the amps do not so two wired together in series is 100 volts and 10 amps and then you can wire in the other two the same way okay and then you can wire those two strings together in parallel so now it's still 100 volts but then the amps add together and now it's 20 amps Ah, see, that's why it ties together, because your charge controller only accepts 100 volts and 30 amps. And if you wire those together correctly, you can fit them on that charge controller. But you have to understand series versus parallel. It's really not that complicated. If you just go back and watch this again and think about these concepts, it's really not that difficult to understand. And once you have a basic understanding of these concepts, like it's pretty damn simple to build a charge i mean to build a solar system now other things that you need to kind of take into consideration are when you're sizing your battery bank okay you go through and you figure out how much power you're going to use in a day okay but what if you have a cloudy day what if you have a day where you you don't get hardly any power off your solar array what if you have two days 
So when you're sizing that battery bank, you need to think about uh, making it so that you can get through a couple of days instead of one. Or maybe you, you like conserve power for a couple of days after you get a cloudy day to charge it back up, you know what I mean? And then also, when you're sizing the solar array, you have to think about, well, I can charge this battery bank in a single day, but I'm also going to be using power during that day. So it needs to be, a, everything needs to be a little oversized if you really want to be sufficient. Uh, you know, I see a lot of van lifers out there that are running around with like 200, 300 watts of solar on the top and one 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery, you know, and they, they make it, but there's no way they're comfortable. You know, there's no way that they're not running themselves out of power all the time. And so when I build the solar system for my van, I plan for it to be really big. Okay. It's going to probably be overkill, but uh, it's going to be so sufficient that I won't ever really have to worry about power, you know. And like, if you're gonna, if you, if you're gonna build a van, like, don't spend a whole bunch of money making it all pretty and shit. Spend a whole bunch of money on your solar system, and really, like, you can, you can do this stuff if you just get away with, like, get away from places like. Bouge RV and Renogy and Battleborn Batteries. If you get away from all these super expensive companies, you can do it pretty cheap. I mean, I'm playing. I could do 1,800 watts on top of a van with a 10 kilowatt battery system for like six grand. I mean, I know it's quite a bit of money, but that's a solar. That's a system that's bigger than any of these van lifers that I'm seeing. And yes, it's a challenge to get that much solar on the roof, but it can be done. And we'll talk about it in another video. So that's, that's, I hope that that was clear on how to tie all this stuff together and the basic concepts you need to understand. It's, it's really not a whole lot. I mean, it's super basic math. And if you just grasp these few concepts and understand how they work together to create a solar array and solar uh, system, for a, a mobile vehicle like it's not very difficult anyway that was the solar video that I wish I had found when I was trying to learn about this stuff and hopefully some people will find it and it'll be useful to them if you did please hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching